Okay, let's look at this ROM. Uh, this is uh, the boot ROM out of the 8711C. And you can see the addresses go from zero to, let's go way up here, three F, 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 F. So pretty big ROM. Um, whenever I look at a ROM, I'm kind of always curious to see if anybody left any interesting messages behind. Sometimes they sign it. Sometimes you'll see little tidbits of information. Um, so let's scroll down here. And it looks like a bunch of random stuff here. Uh, I don't know what all these things are. Maybe it looks like vectors. Maybe a big vector map into the... Oh, wait a minute. Hi, caramba. Oh, nosy, aren't you? What did you expect to find here? Are you sure you know what you're doing, Dave? That would be a reference to 2001. Here's the team was here in 1995. Cool. Oh, and here's everybody's name. Does anybody know anybody? <laughs> Shout out if you know any of these people. Keith Anderson, Roger Peterson, Joe Rowell, Dennis McCarthy, Victor Wu, Dale Albin, Jason Chorora, Chor Chor that's a hard one, uh, Jimmy Yarnell, I used to know Yarnell, uh, Ken Richter, the 871 XB team was here. Ah, this must be the C team. Uh, this is the C team, and this is the B team. Excellent. <laughs> A lot of the same folks. Very cool. Amen. They just copied it from the uh, from the first one. All right. That's a hoot. I like it. Hats off to them. Very well done, gentlemen. All right. Um, so what we want to, what we're interested in here, um, there's probably other interesting, uh, just regular text and stuff from the from the program. Uh, here, let's uh, let's scroll down. Yeah, not a lot. I don't know if this was done in Assembler or this was compiled or whatever. Yeah, here's a bunch of stuff. Uh, invisible track, wrong track, missing sector. All right, if you go to the very, very end of the ROM, the highest, the highest uh, address in the ROM, and you, you see that there are a bunch of repeating patterns, C87, C87, C87. And um, when this thing is um, developed, things get updated. And as things get updated, they write new data. And they write it from uh, in the direction from, 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 lowest, uh, from the highest um, address to the lowest address. So... Uh, then you can see there's a bunch of FFs leaving room for, for more modifications. So every time you update this boot ROM, uh, you enter a new, a new entry. And so what you want to do is you want to uh, go to the very, very last one. And uh, so this is the most up-to-date one. Um, it starts out with the C87. Then it has my um, serial number. So this is the uh, unit serial number. Uh, if they're made here in the United States, it'll start with U.S. And so 5553 is U.S. And uh, what you want to do is you want to look at the four bytes just in front of the four bytes just in front of the serial number. So it's FF, 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 FF. OK, so those those are the ones. All right. So on a 8711C, I think this applies to models B and D as well, but um, model C is what I have. Um, you need to change these uh, bytes to a certain thing. And, and the first time I did this, it didn't work. And I got in contact with a fellow in Italy who had, believe it or not, reverse engineered this thing and figured out what these, what these uh, bytes mean. And so uh, he took a look at his notes and he says, oh, I gave you the wrong information. Now I'm going to update that. And so the secret code is 0008. <laughs> um, so I think some of the older A versions, you just put in all zeros and it was fine. But this particular one, you have to do a, a particular thing because they added a bunch of features to it. So anyway, um, so those four bytes in front of the serial number are now 0008FFFF. And uh, you, you write this and program your prom and put it back in the machine. 
and cross your fingers and boot it up. And if you boot it up, magical things should happen. So let's go take a look. All right, your 8711C has now magically turned into a vector network analyzer. <laughs> You get a Smith chart, it, and it, it, it does cool stuff. <laughs> very, very excited. Uh, let's see here, where's my, where's my 50 ohm cal standard? I'll, I'll, uh, I'll put that on here. And uh, you can see it's just giving us a tiny, tiny, tiny little dot there in the center. And uh, if, you, if you look really, really close to the screen, it says 50. So it's 50 ohms, 25 ohms, 10 ohms. 100 ohms, 250 ohms of infinity, right? And so if we if we open it up, uh, we get we get an infinity over here. Uh, if we put our uh, put our open standard on, uh, that should be pretty well a dot. Yeah. Okay, maybe not a dot. That's interesting. How about our short? Where does our short calibrate to? Yeah, kind of the same thing. Short calibrates to over there. Well, I'm still learning how to use it. <laughs> um, so I looked at the um, I looked at the uh, channel one port, and it's measuring 50 ohms as well. So it, it seems to be it seems to be in good shape. All right, so let's take a look at a couple things here. Um, let's go to system options. Um, so some other things got enabled. Uh, iBasic got enabled. Uh, I don't know if people have seen iBasic. Uh, iBasic display full. So iBasic is a uh, um, basic interpreter built into the machine. You can write programs and stuff, uh, believe it or not. Um, all right, so there's a LAN. Uh, I can turn the LAN, LAN state on. I can turn the LAN off. This will change uh, land state. Yeah, I don't care what the land. Land port setup, uh, addresses and stuff. Okay, cool. Uh, it's got HPIB. It already had that before. System configuration, uh, set the clock and stuff. Um, operating parameters. Mm, so this is this is all standard stuff. Let me see if I can do a cal. Let's see here, not cal. Uh, Menu, where was it? Maybe it's in service. Instrument info. Oh, there we go. So if you go into uh, system options, service menus, uh, this is now the, uh, the instrument inf information. Now it says it's an HP 8712C. Um, there you go. It says that uh, iBasic is installed, the LAN is installed, the step to six attenuator is installed. It does not have the AM delay. It has the SRL and fault location. That now is installed. Um, it's still a 75 ohm unit internally, but it, it calibrates to 50 ohms, I think, okay. Um, I'm going to do a bunch of uh, tests on this, make sure that it really is a good uh, 50 ohm system or not. As a scalar network analyzer, it's awesome at 50 ohms. Let's see how it does its vector stuff. Um, so you can do uh, reflection measurement, uh, format, Smith chart. Let's see here. Let me get rid of my. my I, I think my iBasic is still. Uh, let me do. A, let me do a preset <laughs> and uh, recall. So I. I uh, I have the, the floppy disk working. I have a, a floppy disk in there that was uh, uh, formatted. I can uh, recall state. So I've recalled the state. I can bring it back up. Um, and there we go. You can see we have a split screen now. We have Smith chart and a, and a, uh, a, a log return, uh, return loss measurement uh, back to back. So yeah, it's very, very cool. Um, it's my it's my ten dollar VNA. <laughs> I think it's going to be a good one. Um, so anyway, let let me stop this video here. Uh, I'll I'll do another video on on uh, trying to see how good this machine is. Uh, see if it uh, see if it's operating correctly, and uh, yeah, we'll go from there.